What's up world? Lee here with Sticks, Strings, and Other Things, my teeny tiny itty bitty little corner of the internet where I come to you every other week to chit chat with you about all of the crafty things that I have been getting my hands on to. Today is the 27th of June, 2023. This is episode 64. Welcome. I'm glad you have made some time to sit down with me today. There's a million people out there to watch. I should know. I'm trying to watch them all. Therefore, therefore, I am very, very far behind on my vicarious crafting. Seriously far behind on my vicarious crafting because I'm trying to watch everyone. It doesn't work. There's too many. So for those of you who are watching me today, thank you very much. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. If you do not, well, thank you for giving me a try and enjoy your day. I I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest where we are starting to have summer. I know it's a little strange, a little odd. Typically summer in the Pacific Northwest does not start until the 5th of July. It's a joke around here. It often rains on the 4th, or at least it has in the past. Who knows what it'll be. I mean, less fires that way, right? And fires are bad. Y'all are learning that, right? We, we around here have learned that several times. But y'all are learning that. I understand. It's bad. I understand. All right. Like I said, it is beginning to be a little bit summer-like. Right now, we have this nice gray marine layer all over everything, which keeps us kind of cool all day. And then the sun comes out in the afternoon, and you get some, like, low 70s low to mid 70s. If the world around me just stayed at about mid 70, I'd be happy. That is my sweet spot. 80, 80 if we're talking hot. But the world is not made for my comfort. <laughs> so that is not how it will stay. But that is how it has been the last few days and I have very, very, very much been enjoying it. Right. Let's get to what you're all here for. The actual crafting I have. Um, been a little, um, bouncy. I, I had a hard time sticking with one thing in the past two weeks. I, yeah. So, I will show you what I've been doing. Let us start with my hoe. If you don't know what a hoe is, it is a half finished object. It's a half object. So typically in the knitting world, this would mean a mitten, a glove, a sock. Most of these items need to come in pairs. Comes? Need to come in pairs. So you usually need two. So a hoe is a half object. In other words, I've finished half of a pair of socks. I have pulled out the yarn for this month's Farmer's Daughter's Fibers Sock Squad yarn. I forgot what the name of this one was, but I know the colorway is something like elephant hawk moth. And so I am making a pair of Rose City rollers. And yes, this is an entire sock. Yeah, let me put it on a, let me put it on a foot so I can prove it to you. So these are just a pair of Rose City rollers. So they're just a little nice little tiny sock. Shorty. That's the word I was looking for. It's a just nice little shorty sock. I am doing my my pair this way this time and I'm quite enjoying it. I have finished one as is evidenced by that. My second one is right here do, do, do. and I have about 20 ish odd stitches to go before I go on to the heel. Mm -mm, not the heel, the toe. I've done the heel, the heel's right there. Uh, before I go on to the toe. And then I'll have this pair done. Again, I am trying to get all of my Farmer's Daughter's Fiber, fiber Sock Squad socks whew, done in the month that I, that they are for. So this is the June colorway, and I'm trying to get it done in June. You will note, at the beginning of the show, I said it was the 27th of June. June has 30 days. I still have to get this sock done. I will. I will. It's just been a little fractious in my crafting. I am doing these on a pair of US1 2.25 millimeter um, mindful needles and doing them magic loop. 
just a simple slipped stitch heel flap, heel turn. I used their directions, the, the pattern's directions, for the toe. It was a different toe than I have seen before, so I thought I'd give it a try. I mean, it's just a rounded toe, but it was done at a different rate than I'm used to. So I thought I'd give it a try. I like to try different toes and heels because you never know. Maybe you'll find one that fits even better than the one you normally use. So that is what this is. As you can see, <coughs> I told you the same direction, guys. I am getting quite close. These do not use much in the way of yarn. <laughs> I still feel like I have the majority of my yarn, which makes sense. I mean, they're just tiny little shorties. I barely use anything. Uh, Rose City Rollers are uh, a design by Orange Knits. I do not think it is available anymore. I have had it in my Ravelry for ever. Oh. Speaking of, uh, if you want to find me on other types of social media, not sure why you would, but if you did, I am typically found as Kale Rain, K I E L R A I N, on both Ravelry and Instagram. Not that I ever post in either place very often. I'm trying to get better. Oh, yes, I am drinking tea because, uh, always. I am drinking a tea from Plum Deluxe. It is called Vanilla Toddy Black because, well, why not have a toddy in the morning? I, there's no booze in this. It's just tea. But it's fun to say I'm having a toddy in the morning. It smells really good. It's also quite tasty. If you like a bit of vanilla, Vanilla Toddy is the way to go. Very much enjoying it. Anyhow, that is my only, I have no, I have no, no finishes. That's why I started with the hoe. Let's get on to the whips. <sighs> yeah. This, this might get a little, okay. <laughs> let's just, let's just start. Uh, let's just pull, start pulling. Not this one though. That's for later. Let's just, let's just start pulling. Pull. <clears throat> Oh, whips. Okay. As I said, I kind of had a hard time focusing and kept bouncing all over the place. Last we were here, I was working on something that lives in this lovely bag by, I want to say Pinky, Prom Pinky Promises. Something. Yes, this is the Namarier Tapestry by Modern Folk Embroidery. I foolishly put this next to the uh, vinyl, and so now it's kind of stuck. I know better. I know better. I just forgot. So yes, the Namarie. <clears throat> Let's try that right side up. The Namarie Tapestry. Aww. Still loving this. Did not get as far as I was hoping to, because <laughs> squirrel. But there I am. So I have finished that upper portion with the lovely horses of Rohan and the tree of Gondor. And oh, yes, lovely. I am doing this on a 40 count arboreal by Cedar Linen. And I am using Roxy Flosco in Mollusk. So there's the flosses, the lovely fabric, and the glorious, glorious piece. I do want to get back to this one. I really do. We'll see if I do. <laughs> we'll see if I get back to it. But I want to because I absolutely love this piece. Just uh, the Noire tapestry is too beautiful. So the next pot I'm going to be working on is this lovely serpenty knot bit here. I really want to get to the Elvish. I really do. I'll get there. I will. 
but I, I got to the end of the horses and that took a lot more thread than I anticipated. I know that the Namaria Tapestry says that it is going to take six skeins of yarn, not skeins of yarn, six skeins of thread. But I was like, oh, really? Yeah. This took this, this upper portion, the part I've ha have done is, is already one whole skein it is gone. I've used a whole one already. I am into my second. So I was a little astonished. <laughs> I mean, they told me, Jacob, said, you'll need six. So I bought six because, well, otherwise you don't have enough thread and everybody's sad later. So I do not know why I am so surprised that this portion took me an entire skein. Because if it takes six skeins, it would make sense that that would take one. This will take at least one. These, it, 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 duh. <laughs> don't know why I'm so surprised, but I really was. I'm loving this piece. It is beautiful. It is glorious. It is elvish. And I have nothing but great things to say about this piece. And the linen is lovely. The arboreal color is just perfect. I mean, arboreal. It's kind of perfect for Galadriel's Lament. How, how can you not put these two things together? Which is why I did. So that is one of my whips. Then I, I decided to break my eyes because I felt like it. And I pulled out the one that is living in this lovely little bumper shoot bag. And I love it. It's so pretty. All the umbrellas, the bumper shoots. If you don't know, that's another word for umbrella is a bumper shoot. I don't know why, but it is. Living in this is My Lady's Needle by Sorry, My Lady's Needle is the designer. This is M. Woods. This is a lovely reproduction. I have had it for years, and I am finally, finally getting some work done on it. This is the lovely piece. And I am doing this on legacy fabric in an uneven weave, which is a 52-62 uneven weave. So about a 50 count is what they're calling it. But how can it be a 50 count if one way is 52 and one way is 62 count? How do they call it about a 50? Because that's what it says. On the label, if it focuses. See? Count 50-ish. But it says it's 62 one way and 52 the other. How does that average out to 50? 50? I don't know. Anyhow, this is what I'm using. It is do, 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 the color Vintage Meadow Rue. And oh, is teeny. Is teeny tiny. So I have the first part of the alphabet done all the way over to P. So this is as wide as the project will be. And I stopped before I got to, let me find it out. I stopped before I got to this band here because I was reading the instructions and the instructions said things like, warning. This is not even. Watch out. There will be random countings because this is a reproduction sampler. So of course we're going to reproduce it, which means all the little random mistakes. And then I looked closer and there are some over one stitches. Over one. Yipes. Terrified absolutely terrified but it is going to be so beautiful my goal for this year on this piece is to get this first alphabet done so I have that one done I need to get through this lovely border here and then the other half of the alphabet and that was my goal for the year we'll see if I get there because whew, even with great light and some magnification this is a little difficult. I think, I think I need to get a different needle size. 
I, I did change. I did change my needle size, and now I put that one into a spe separate sp spot because when I changed my needle size, I changed it to a, one that was a bit smaller, and that did seem to help with stitching on this. It makes sense. But yeah, uh, when I was using a bigger needle, it was rougher. It was harder to do. I am using Vicki Clayton Silks. So this was a conversion she did years and years, years and years and years and years and years ago. Uh, they're dated 2013. This is back when she had her super fine floss. So I have all of them on her spools and it is her super fine floss so it is appropriately sized for the teeny tiny fabric because you can't use a regular it it would be all bunchy and gross and clogged if i think if i tried to use say dmc on this size which is why i'm not i do not think that vicky clayton even makes her super fine floss anymore but like i said uh, those have a date of 2013 on them and yes that is when i originally started it and i'd done like the a and the b the two A's and the two B's, and then I stopped. But it is back out, and I did some some progress on it, so I finished part of it, and then cried when I saw that there was over one type stuff, and said, I knew there were specialty stitches, I didn't think there'd be over one, and now I'm doing it on 50 count. <gasps> I took a breath and put it to the side. I will bring it back out, and I will play with that, and I have no clue how I will show you how teeny tiny those will be, it was hard enough to show you the teeny tiny stitches that I already have. However, I will do my best because I'm actually finding it fascinating. It's difficult. It's difficult to work on 5262 count fabric. It is, but it's not unpleasant. It just, I have to have fresh eyes and I have to have good light and I have to have magnification. <laughs> and it works and it's fun and it's neat and after a little bit it was getting easier so I think if I when I pull this out again and I work on it a little bit longer I think my eyes will adjust to the size of the the fabric and all of that and again I don't know what needle size it is but whatever needle I pulled out the second time like when I was like I have to change this needle this the one that I was using was just too big and made it harder to stitch so I found a smaller needle and that that I should put in here actually. That made a huge difference. Duh! Using the right tool for the job makes things easier. <sighs> Learning that a lot with this. I know a lot of people work on 56 count and they just, that's just what they do. Well they obviously have the right tools. I have the right fabric, I have the right floss, but I don't have the right needle and that made a huge difference. So if you do want to work on the tinier, tinier counts, get the right needle. <laughs> I swear, I, I did half of that, half of that new portion I did with the bigger needle, and it was a struggle. And then I was like, ah, I've got to find a found the smaller needle, and the second half just, oh, it went so smoothly. And I would have kept going on that, other than the, ooh, I, I have to count now? Hmm. 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 I'm going to wait. But M. Woods, is beautiful and when it is finally fully finished or finished and then framed <laughs> if I ever do that it's gonna be so pretty right next up on my list of cross stitch I pulled out my moons of 2022 by what is this Kathy Barrick well I'm I and I knew this when I bought it I'm just going to change it to say the moons so this portion right here that says the moons of 2022 i'm just going to take the of 2022 move the moons chook over into the center because these are the names of the moons for each month and that doesn't change too much those are vaguely usually about the right things the only thing that changes is the new moon and that well happens randomly throughout the year because our lunar cycle and our solar cycle are slightly not the same because the sun is different than the moon shocking. Anyhow, I have pulled this out and I am doing this one on a 40 count vanilla latte by Be Stitch Me and I am doing all of this fill. So much fill. So much fill. So when I picked it up again, I had a little bit of fill like right around here, but not a ton. I've made it all the way across now and I am starting to fill in. I have filled all the way around this moon. It's so pretty. 
looks so much better that moon does now that the blue is surrounding it and I'm very much liking this my goal for this one this year is to finish all of the fill of the blue at the top because that's that's a lot of it's a lot of stitches I am using the called for NPIs for this one and they are held in these lovely sandwich bags that I put a hole punch in so I could put them on a ring they're snack bags because high class over here just saying um, I do love MPIs they are beautiful this is almost one whole skein of the MPI silks it called for three I believe I, I have three and I'm assuming I bought the appropriate amount for the project uh, this is almost one whole skein I am I know I'll be going into the second one by the time I am done and then you see that you use it a lot more down in the bottoms ah, I do love this piece the fill is no fun I did get rid of this cheruby angel guy he just didn't do it for me so I turned him into a star because there's all these lovely stars and so I took him out and put a star in I believe it was that star oh yes oh, I have left some of my projects so I'm gonna have to go get them in just a minute anyhow I I'm really enjoying this but I feel gets a little boring <laughs> it does it does I needed it after the moons not sorry I needed it after M woods I, I needed some ah oh, just stitching yes and so that is why I pulled this out to do that but I am very much loving it it's very pretty and I am going to enjoy getting back to it when I get back to it and now I'm going to pause for just a minute because I have forgotten two of my whips and I haven't even showed all my whips but I forgot two of them so I figure now is as good a time as any to go get them because I have remembered that I forgot them makes sense I will be right back and I'm back with the things that I've forgotten I forgot this one because this is the one I'm currently working on and so it was still on my stand oops I did pull it off the Q snap and the stand however so that I could show it to you I am working on my Mirabilia Maidens of the Seasons. So, here's where it stands right now. The part that I've been working on is Summer. As you can see, she has none of her back stitching. I have been working down here in her dress. I pulled out this color, pulled out, I put in this color and a couple of little tidbits around here. And then I came down with this and I'll be filling in this part of her toga and then the rest of her toga and then her legs because it's summer and so she has legs showing which I am not looking forward to because yes I did my skin over one <laughs> so her legs will also have to be over one I mean you gotta have the legs and the head the, the, the skin has to match but this is here let's hold that a little nicer this is where she is standing right now and i'm very much enjoying bringing her out my goal for this year is to finish summer and it made sense in my brain to try and finish summer in the season of summer so that was when i figured i would start working on her i also have a fancy folk zoom this thursday that i'm going to try and make so I can be working on her there and oh she looks so good she's gonna look so much better once I backstitch her she looks so good I have I have the Krynik in because there's not a lot of it used there's a little bit up in the corners and then down on the bottom in the in the season names oh so pretty this is on a sugar maple fabric called I think serendipity and it is a 28 because it is an opalescent and I wanted to make sure I'd be able to uh, get all of the beading bits done because there's a ton of beads on this baby 
I started with winter, I did spring, there's summer, and then over here there will be autumn. Because, you know, that's how the seasons go. As you can see, I've finished all the bits for the first two seasons, the back stitch and such like that. I just have not done any of the beads. And, oh, it looks, looks really good. It is going to be a pain in the butt to frame, which is why I never end up framing my Mirabilias. I have like three finished and they just sit, or is it two? Maybe it's just one. I have at least one finished. I have Fairy Moon. No, I have Fairy Moon and, not Fairy, yeah, Fairy Moon. I have Fairy Moon finished and I have Midsummer Night's Fairy. So I have those two finished, not framed, because the puppies are big. <laughs> Oh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Though I still don't know how I'm going to fix Autumn's fingers. Autumn has this weird hand thing going on that I don't have the skill to fix. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Anyhow, that is what I've just pulled out. And I will see how far I get on it. I'm hoping I get pretty far on it before I get tired of it and move on to the other thing, or I just finish summer and call it a day. I have a feeling we're going to get stuck in those legs and be like, oh, I'm done. But I do want to finish her this summer because it's summer. Now, the rest of my whips are all cross-stitch. Nope, that was all my cross-stitch whips. The rest of my whips are all knitting. You know, when you do multiple crafts. And sometimes you use the wrong word for them. Living in my Hohi Locatelli bag are my work socks. It's been a bit, so I thought I'd show them off. It's just, it's just a work sock. I am just doing a broken rib pattern, 64 stitch sock, 2.25 uh, millimeter, Haya Haya Sharp, Magic Loop. I did a Slip stitch heel, and I'm working down, working down the foot now. And yep, the yarn that I'm using is kind of a neat one. Where's my yarn? Where's my yarn tag? There it is. Whew. I was worried for a minute there. This is by Big Little Yarn Co., and it is. An interesting base. It is her. Ooh, the the ink is fading. Superwash merino mohair sock. I think is what it says, and it is superwash merino not merino wool, some nylon, and then twenty percent mohair, which I don't think is showing up very well on the screen. But if it does, there's, there's just this little bit of a halo fuzz all the way around, all the way around the sock. And that's kind of fun, which is also why I decided to just do a really simple broken rib type of pattern. And I like the colors. They're very autumnal. And yeah, I like how, I like how it kind of striped on the heel turned. Just because, you know, different different um, stitch count and I'm working back and forth on the heel turn. And so, one second. Apologies about that. Mohair came out and so therefore I had to sneeze. That is the way. But I do like how it striped on the heel turn. Because, like I said, different stitch count and working back and forth flat, it changes how the yarn pools. I thought that was neat but I am liking how this yarn is coming out. And if I pull it apart a little bit, you can see just the nice broken rib that I am doing. I did a two by two cuff at the top. I think I did something like 20-ish rows. I don't remember. I didn't count my rows there, but then I am putting in a marker every 10 rows because I typically like about 60, 70, 60-ish 60 here, and then I do about 70-ish here. And that just makes it easier for me to not have to count. And since I'm doing these at work, it makes sense to not have to count too much. And I just pop in my little stitch markers so that I can see where I'm at. 
Anyhow, I hadn't shown these in a little while and they've had a little bit of progress done on them. So I decided to pull them out. I'm hoping they'll be done by autumn. Whenever I have a work sock, they get done when they get done. It's, it's, it's all dependent on how busy or how much work we have to do at work as to whether or not I can work on them, which makes sense. I, I am paid to work, not knit. I wish I was paid to knit. That would be awesome, but I'm not. Only if I could knit on what I wanted to. Because you can get paid to knit. Then you have to knit what somebody else tells you. I'm not so great at that. Anyhow, enough of that. My work socks get done when they are going to get done. I don't really have goals for those. The other two things that I have worked on, one is living in this um, Bags by Awesome Granny. And I just love, I love the bees gap and the bees. Living in here is my Andrea Mowry Big Cozy Cardi, and I stopped it in the middle of a row. Well, in the middle of a row, <laughs> we have stopped. This is a cardigan, because see, there's, there's the cardigan. But I'm in the middle of a row, and it has my sloths on it. I am doing this on a US 4 3.5 millimeter. And this is the lovely texture. Last time we were here, wow, stopping in the middle of a row is really, really frustrating, because I can't find anything. Where's my stitch marker? Where's my progress keeper? There he is. Found him, finally. Man. There is where I was last time. Again, it is a little sloth stitch keeper, uh, progress marker. I bought that from the Corner of Craft. She is a UK dyer and does these delightful, delightful beaded stitch markers. Her name's Hannah. She is a delight. So there is, oh, focus on them. There's my little sloth. Let us move him up. I have like 20 some odd inches on this. It's like 26, I think it was like 26 inches on this baby. And I need 30 before I can bind off, then I block it, then I sew up the sides to make it into a giant weird shaped thing to make it a cardigan, after which I think I do the arms, which is just a whole bunch of ribbing, and then I do the... Do, do, do. I do the collar a waterfall kind of color in this lovely fluff. All of this is Farmer's Daughter's Fibers fibers, in their Recollect base in the colorway York. The mohair will be, again, the York base, but is on their Odang, which is their... I said mohair, and I think it's Surrey. Yeah, it's Surrey. I called it mohair. It's not mohair, it's Surrey. Anyhow, I'm still absolutely loving this, but oy, I needed a little bit of a break. I needed a break from it, and evidently I felt that that break needed to be happening in the middle of a row. I should probably get back to this to at least finish the row. That would be good. Anyhow, loving it. It's going to be so good when it's done. Yeah, moved that up. When I did put that down and decide to work on something else, I was all, I should pull out an old project because I was feeling like polishing a halo and working on a whip. So I glanced through some of my whips and I said, huh, you know, I've bought a couple advent calendars for this, this coming season. Perhaps I should finish another of my adject, advent projects from earlier. So I pulled out this lovely bag, still in love with the zipper. I don't remember who made this bag. Katie did bags. Thank you. 
thank you makers who put things on your bags because I'm not going to remember. Anyhow, living in here is an advent project from two years ago. It's the Lamia Wrap by Amba O'Brien and I am using the Canon Hand Dyes High Tea Advent from a couple of years ago. I was, last time I was here, I was here with the lovely turkey. Again, this is another stitch marker by Hannah from Corner of Craft. And I did, so last time I showed it, I was here, but I think all I did was finish, finish this round. So let's move it up. And I don't know why I have a turkey on here. I think because it matches the colors. <laughs> Anyhow, it will obviously look a lot better once it's washed and blocked because lace, and that is what lace does. I am loving it. As you can see, I'm currently with no yarn balls attached, but I have wound up the next color. I believe this is color eight. I have color nine and color 10 waiting for me. They are all wound. All the rest of them are in a bag and a separate bag uh, and they are not wound. So I wind like five of them, then pop them in here, then work on the pattern as I see fit. And my goal, it really should get some stitch markers, not stitch markers, needle stoppers for this one because I am just popping it in and out of here. Hmm, I wonder if I have any stitch markers handy. I keep saying stitch marker when I mean needle stopper. Hold on, just a moment. I'm going to see if I have any needle stoppers. Answer looks like no, which means tomorrow at work, maybe I can buy some cute ones. Because I am a little concerned that this might fall off the needles. It could, it could happen. We wouldn't want that to happen, would we? So we need needle stoppers. I like my logic. There's a couple of the needle stoppers at work that I think are really cute that I would like to buy. Now I have an excuse. Ah, oh, I do like, I do like. I'm not much of a yellows person, especially since around my neck it doesn't look really good. And so when I bought the high tea, when I bought the high tea advent, I didn't think about the fact that the colors were all gonna be tea colors, which means browns and yellows and colors I don't normally wear, but this will, when it's finished, be lovely for autumn. It'll be absolutely gorgeous and I'll wear it anyway, even if it makes me look like death. I don't care. I like tea. I don't know if you can tell, but this is my t-shirt. I am a tea fan. So I do want to try and get a couple more uh, do, 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 words, uh, minis into this. In a perfect world, I'd finish it before I get more advents, but this isn't my only advent that I have that I haven't finished anything with, so we won't talk about that. I do know that Hannah from Corner Craft again does, she did it last year, she's talking about doing it this year, a an advent, essentially advents past kind of knit along. So. You know, pull out your old advents and actually finish them before you get a whole bunch for the new ones of the new year. And I think she's planning on doing that in August this year. So maybe I'll make a huge push on this one in August. And if I finish it, maybe I will pull out another one that I have. I have a few that I never did anything with. And then I bought more for this year. I really need to stop doing that. But advents are so fun. I can't help myself. So that is that project, and that is that project, that is that project, and then, because I don't have enough projects, either cross-stitch, I've been doing well cross-stitch-wise, I shouldn't lie, cross-stitch-wise, I've been doing Whip Warriors this year, which means I had a select number of projects that I could work on through the year, and couldn't go over that, it was 23 and 23 is the, is the version I am doing of Whip Warriors. And I have been sticking very well to that. I had a couple new starts, but I had room for them in my 
in my list of 25, 23 projects. And I started really itching to start new things. Really, really, really itching. <laughs> ah, ooh, <clears throat> that was a weird noise. But I'm trying not to and just working on those 23 projects. So far it's going well. Next year I have plans. I might talk about them in plans, but I have plans that'll be very different for that next year. Anyhow, I, I don't have that same restraint <laughs> put on me for my knitting. And so I went, I don't care that I have multiple whips. I want to start something new. So living in my knotting knitting sack, knotty knitting sack with 1950s book covers and inside knotty skeletons. I decided to start a Stephen West shawl because I wanted to. And this one is Vertices Unite. I've been wanting to do Vertices Unite for a while and um, Needles at the Ready uh, are a podcast, Kevin and Ray. They are doing a Let's Hear It for the Boys knit along and they opened it up to not just knitting for a guy this year. They um, had said it was just going to be if you're knitting something for a man, you can join their, their knit along. And then they expanded again a little bit to also include if you're using a yarn dyed by a man or a project that was designed by a man. And when they opened it back up to designed by a man, I said, yay, I can start my Vertices Unite for that knitting challenge thing. And so I pulled out all of my Amanda Knits yarns that she, she did a club for Supernatural. So all of these yarns are based on the terrible, terrible show, Supernatural. I love the show. It's awful. It's really not good. But I do very much enjoy watching it because it's trash. And occasionally I like trash. Anyhow, those are the yarns that I am using, the Amanda Knits yarns, and I am using all of the super, five of the six Supernatural colorways that came out. I have finished section one. Here is section one of Vertices Unite. Yes, yes, that is, that is section one. Yes, you see the site. Did I mention this was a Stephen West shawl? This, section one, is a teeny tiny shawl all in itself. Because Stephen West, the man is like six foot five. He can wear blankets as shawls and they don't dwarf him. I am not six foot five, but I still love Stephen West shawls, even at that size, because I don't care if I'm dwarfed in the shawl. They're so cozy. I am making the larger size. I had a choice. I had a choice to make the smaller size. Did I? Knowing Stephen West size shawls, did I choose the smaller size? Heck no, I said, gimme, gimme the large size. Anyhow, I, these are two colors. It's, it's just a giant garter stitch shawl, but it is pieced together. Pieced? It's done in little chunks. It's done in little sections. And this is section one. And the colorways that I have in here are, this, this lighter colorway is called Butt. And this blue brown colorway is called Dude, Where's the Pie? What I find interesting about the Dude, Where's the Pie colorway is in the skein, it looked very, very blue. Blue with hints of brown. Then when I was knitting it up, it looked very, very, very brown. And now here, it looks kind of both. I love yarn. I love yarn so much. Uh, it does, just delights me how it plays around. Oh, so pretty. Anyhow, this is section one. Section two will be these two colors. Jerk and Peace Out Bitches. So those will be the next portion and these will be put together. The last color is not wound yet because I don't need it yet. It's called Hello Boys. And that is uh, this color. Oh, these are gonna be so good. These are gonna be so good. And I am using, what am I using? A size four, US four, 3.5 millimeter. 
and these are my mindful needles. I do love the mindful tips. They are nice. I do like them. What I hate about them is they have these stupid words on everyone. I think I've commented on it before. I don't know if you can see it. This one says, breathe. My other one earlier, calm. Don't tell me what to do. I am the one who's using the knitting needles. I am the one that tells you what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I love the needle tips. I do. I love the swivel cords. I'm a fan of the swivel cord. Because Haya Hayas have those and have had those forever. So I like that these also have a swivel cord. Delightful. Love that. Love the tip. They feel good. Just get rid of the stupid comment. <sighs> it annoys me. I love everything else about the needle. Hate. Hate that. They are a little bit less sharp than a Haya Haya Sharp. They are probably, I don't know, but they're probably about as sharp as a regular Haya Haya. I don't know. I don't have any regular Haya Hayas. Why do I use a Haya Haya? Why do I use a Mindful? It's whatever I have free. I like both of them. Uh, if I'm doing a lot of lace or something like that, I do like my Haya Haya Sharps for that. If I'm doing a lot of cabling, again, my Haya Haya Sharps, good for that. But I'm happy. I'm happy using my needles. Anyhow. Ta-da! <laughs> so I have just, oops, let's show you the correct side. I have just section one done. I finished section one, one yesterday, which means that probably today I, I should finish. I should finish that. <laughs> but if I don't, if I don't feel like working on a sock, I will finish my sock. I will finish my sock first. Ugh. And then I will get to section two of my Vertices Unite. This knit along with uh, Needles at the Ready goes through I want to say August, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I would have to check. And it's just knit anything that is celebrating men in the knitting industry, basically. Because a lot of designs and designers tend to be women, and so a lot of the things are focused for women, and they like to focus on, hey, guys knit too, so let's, let's, let's celebrate and show off guy knitting as well, so that, you know, not just all the... Not all the things have to be put on female models. I know when you're a female knitter and you're a female designer, you just put it on your own body because you, know, you don't have money for a model. <laughs> Maybe you don't have a guy to throw it on. But yeah, their, their whole goal is to kind of encourage more things that men can say, hey, yeah, I can wear that too. And, oh man, Kevin and Ray, knit some beautiful things and they do some gorgeous shawls. They have made a few Vertices Unites. So that's also kind of why I'm using a Vertices Unite because I know they both have some. I think they both have one. I don't know. Have they both made one? Possible? I may not know what I'm talking about. I know at least one of them has a Vertices Unite. <laughs> Anyhow, that is what I'm doing. And I really love it. And garter stitch. Squish, squish, squish. Squish, squish. Oh, this space is Hercanta space. It's just a, I want to say an 80-20. It is an 80-20. 80% superwash merino. 20% nylon. Because that's what it felt like. I'm like, it feels like an 80-20. Let me double check. And I'm not just telling you lies. I'm not telling you lies. It is an 80-20. You can tell the difference if you work with yarns long enough. You can feel the difference. Anyhow, I'm very much enjoying this. I love how it's working up. It just looks so lovely. I should show you what Dude Where's the Pie looks like caked up. See, it looks very, very blue. Look at all that blue. But yeah, there's a lot of brown in it too. And it's fascinating to me that that's kind of how it's showing up. Oh, this cake has seen better days. And then we have butt which is this lovely lovely light neutral with lovely speckles I'm just telling you the names people just telling you the names I, I kept all the cards for when she did them so let me 
There's, there's, there's ass butt. There's, dude, where's the pie? And then I'm going to have jerk. Peace out, bitches. And hello, boys. So the one I am not using is Bobby's Rust Bucket. It's a lovely, lovely skein. I don't have it in here, but it's a lovely skein. It's all these lovely greens and a couple rust colors, and it's beautiful. It just didn't seem to fit in with this particular project. I am sure if I would have found a six skein shawl, I could have popped it in there and it all would have looked beautiful together. But of the five that I needed, I looked at all six colors, and Bobby's Rust Bucket was the one that got next. And that, oh my, that is all my whips. <laughs> oh wow, that's a lot. That's fine, it's fun. So plants. All right, plants, 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 plants. <laughs> As you can tell, I, I, I don't know. I do plan to finish my Rose City Rollers in the next couple of days because I do want to get that done in June. I have not yet received July's colorway, but I have received a shipping notice for it. So next time I film, not only should I have the color, hopefully I will have it on the needles and I won't be running so late with it this time, as, as I am this month. I hope to get a good chunk done on my Maidens of the Season Summer. I would love it if I could finish all of her dress and then just have her legs and then the, her, her border around her. And, the bits that are in behind her because there's a, still a couple like oranges on the side borders that I still need to do some leaves things like that but I would like to get all of her dress done that is my goal for that and vertices unite I would love 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 to get a good chunk done on it too I I maybe maybe get all of section two maybe section two and section three we'll see I think there's five or six sections. I don't remember. Whatever. I'm hoping to get at least section two done, if not section three. I want to get at least one more color done on my Lamia wrap so that I have it still moving. And on my big cozy cardi, the very, very, very minimum, I would like to at least not have it in the middle of a row. Uh huh. With my stitching as well. Ooh, no, I can't start anything else. I'm not allowed to start anything else, but I mean work on anything else. So that's my basic plans for the next two weeks. I am starting to percolate in the brain my plans for next year. I, I might do something a little wacky. I, I do plan on kind of having a thought for a goal for every single one of my projects. Whether I make it that year or not doesn't matter. Just, hey, I'd like to have this part done for this year. So I'm either going to do it that way, or maybe I'll stick with Whip Warriors and choose 24 projects. If they do the 20, they did 23 and 23. Maybe if they do 24 and 24 next year, maybe I'll do 24 and 24 next year. If, if they do it that way. I'm really enjoying uh, that group. That or I'll do their stitch what you want when you want version and start a number of projects that will be my birth year next year. My birthday. My age. I have a number coming. I have a number coming next year. It is a number. And I have contemplated starting that many projects by my birthday next year. That's the kind of, woo, not sure if I'm going to do that uh, idea, plan, thing, but I kind of want to. I know a couple people have been doing that. And um, Crafts and Books, oh, what's her real name? 
That's her Facebook group, Crafts and Books. Beth. Remember her name. I don't remember her YouTube channel. Because her YouTube channel isn't the same as Crafts and Books, I don't think. Steadfast Stitcher? Could be wrong. Beth <laughs> is her real name. Uh, she is doing a 60 by 60 thing. Starting 60 projects. And it's really fun to watch. And I know that... Um, well, names are just popping right out of my head. Just, 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 just. The person who does 24 hours of cross stitch. Whatever her name is, I cannot remember right now. She did the 222 projects last year, which, whoa! Whoa, no. But I'm thinking maybe I have a really late birthday. So if I do, hey, start that many projects before my birthday, not that, not 222, but the same number as will be my age. That could be fun. And then I'd actually remember how old I am and not make myself a year older like I've been doing all this year. A, I don't remember what age I am half the time, people. Does it matter? No. Anyhow, that's a thought also. So yeah, contemplating things for my cross stitch. Those are plans. Shall we get to stash? I have a little stash. I have a little stash. I have... Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. I have my little help from my friends, the Stitching Circle from Silver Needle. The last one, the latest one came out and it is this one. By Brenda Key. The sampler company. And this is called Blue Bore Inn. And that's lovely. It has all the stuff. So that showed up. I also have the latest Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I do like these. They sent it to me and on the back, there was this whole little sign going, hey, this is your last subscription, or last last uh, magazine year subscription. Do you want to re -app? And I was like, yes. So I gave them more money. <laughs> I, I have been tempted by Punch Needle, but I really don't want another craft. But at the same time, I really like the Punch Needle, but I don't need another craft. But I don't know how to Punch Needle, and I'd have to learn, and I don't need another craft. Anyhow, I like some of the projects in here. They are lovely. I'm glad I have that. And then I made a purchase. I purchased Plum Street Sampler's Summer Moon. And I also got all of the fancy flosses for Spring Moon and Summer Moon. So I've had Spring Moon for a bit. And decided when I bought Summer Moon to just get all of the fancy flosses for both of them. I I can get the DMC on my own. I just really love, I love them both. <laughs> I mean, this one, I just, there's something about this basket on top and then the bunny I just really like. This one, this house, this house. I love this house. It is so cool. And they're not tiny. They're, what? Spring Moon is 145 by 169 and this one is 150 by 169. So they're practically, Practically the same size, but oh. I bought all the fancy flosses for it. So all I need for both of these now is some fabric, which I have tons of fabric, so that won't be a problem. And then the DMCs that go in them, which I have plenty of DMC, so I can get them. And if I don't happen to have that color, which isn't that always how it is when you're kidding something up? You go, oh, I have all the DMCs. And then you go to kit it up and you go, how do I not have this one DMC that I need? I'll get the DMCs if I need to, but I don't think I'll need to. I think I have them. And I have plenty of fabric, like I said. It's not like I can start them anytime soon because I'm still doing Whip Warriors. So that's, oh, I forgot. I've got one last stash. I bought from the Wooly Thistle their... 2023 sock bag 
and you can hear the crinkle from here. They had two versions this year. I only chose one of them. I chose the what transcend transcontinental. So those are the yarns that I got. So there's some Rauma Gamelsery. There is some Exmoor sock. That's this yellow over here. There's some West Yorkshire spinners. And then there's the Wooler, the Woolly Thistle Rambler yarn. That's this blue one. So these are lovely, lovely yarns. I think I'm like, I think none of them are superwash, which is what kind of the woolly thistle does. They they do the non-superwash yarn. Excuse all the crinkling. Anyhow. I did their sock bag last year. It was fun. Did I use any of the yarns? No. But uh, de details. I decided to do the sock yarn bag again this year and that is this year's design. I do have a goal to get this one, this bag used <laughs> before I get next year's because I likely will get next year's too. I have some yarn on the way to me for another project. I will show it when it shows up. It is going to be, it's going to make a lo lovely, beautiful hat shawl. Mm. I've been wanting to make a hat for years. And so I finally bit the bullet and bought yarn for a hap. If you don't know what a hap is, they're a giant Scottish, Norwegian, I don't, North. They're a North based wrap. It's a giant square that has lace on the outside. And they're beautiful. And they're almost, almost always done in nice woolly wools. So no, no superwash involved. Nice woolly wools and that are scrumptious and squishy and glorious. So yeah, I bought some yarn to do that with from Bare Naked Wools. They are doing a mystery wool along, so you don't really know what the wools are. I'm late to join the game. They started technically in June, like two weeks ago, June. <laughs> I just started. I just purchased. Um, three days ago, I think I purchased it. So it should show up pretty soon. And so yeah, I'm gonna make myself a hap because I don't have enough giant shawls going or finished. Nope. I like wrapping up in giant shawls. <laughs> what can I say? I find them comfy and cozy. And I don't care if it looks like I'm wearing a blanket. I don't care if I look like I'm an 8,000 year old Grammy. I don't care. I'm comfy and cozy wrapped up in my shawls. And yeah, I'm short. And sometimes the shawls are bigger than I am. Just means I'm warm. It's all good. And that's all the stash. Now on to life. Eh. I'm keeping myself busy. Keep myself out of trouble. Trying to walk more again off that walking wagon a little while ago trying to get back into it I still have zero energy um, the only day I have energy is on Tuesday I, I work on Wednesday and Friday and that wears me out enough that the only day I have energy is Tuesday which is a little frustrating but hey you get to see me when I have energy <laughs> Woo! you see I have great energy on Tuesday I feel like I can do normal things I feel like I can live a normal life and not just be exhausted and feel like I'm hauling my butt through molasses all the time, which is where I normally live. But on Tuesdays, I feel like a human who, it, you know, just normal. I just feel normal like I used to. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I get more, more days like this. I'm hoping. Anyhow, um, yeah keeping myself out of trouble, trouble by, you know, starting a million projects. I didn't really start a million projects. I only started one project, but working on a million projects. I uh, have been trying to hit more Zoom things online um, because I like crafting with people. 
but I also like never leaving my house. And therefore, Zoom meetings are fantastic. I can meet up with people and craft with them and not leave my house. Yeah, loving that. I probably should craft with people I know and in-person people, if there are any. I probably should because it's always nice to hang out with people that, you know, get you and your craft and they don't just go, oh, hmm, that's lovely. Oh, quick update. Uh, you know how I did that cross stitch of all of the shells for my friend that I gave to her for her birthday, gave back to her for her birthday. She absolutely adored it. I mean, she was very happy that I did, I did that for her and she's framed it and she's put it on her wall and it looks gorgeous. And it makes me feel so very happy that I was able to help her out like that. And she says she looks at it and she thinks of her aunt because that's why she wanted to do it. And it's just such a great feeling that I, I got to help her. And now she has this thing that reminds her of her aunt and I got to do that for her and it feels so good. <laughs> it just does. I uh, got my, the little baby things that I made, the little, the, the uh, baby vertebrae and the baby socks. I gave those to my friends who are, who are expecting their baby and they were like, oh, oh my God, it's so sweet, thank you. So they were very happy and that's good. Hopefully they use it. If they don't, that's fine too. Um, it was fun to make for them and I hope they get some decent use out of it if it works for their life. If it doesn't work for their life, then, you know, then that's, that's, they need to do what's good for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really doing much. I, I'm keeping it lazy. I sit on my porch when it's nice and I watch the baby bunnies and the deer and Occasionally the coyotes run through and I go, run, baby bunny, run. I hope I don't witness coyote bunny problems, but there are coyotes and there are bunnies, so... Tis the circle of life. I listen to the owls. Hopefully we won't have any drunk owls this year because those are annoying. Listen to the owls. I'm happy that the days are getting shorter because it's annoying when it's light at 10 o'clock at night. I'm not a fan. That's basically it. I hope all of you are doing delightfully well. I hope you are getting all the crafting in that you want to. I hope you are making fun crafting plans if that is what you want to be doing. And I hope you all are as healthy as you can be. I will see you all in two weeks. It will be July. How is this year going so fast? It will be July the next time I see you, and that is terrifying. <laughs> but that's how time goes. It just keeps moving, whether you want it to or not. Right. I will see you all in July. Take care. This is a rather long one. I kind of babbled a bit, and I had a million whips. Well, not a million, but several. I hope you all take care, like I said, and bye-bye.